This is the 23rd video in our series on Lie algebras. Today's a big day. We're going to talk about Carton matrices and Dinkin diagrams and prove some results will, which will give us a pathway towards classifying simple finite dimensional Lie algebras. Okay. So let's say we've got a root system R and we've got a base for that root system, sometimes called a set of simple roots, alpha one through alpha n. Then the Carton matrix is simply this bilinear form, the killing form of alpha i, alpha j. Those are the entries here. And well, that builds the following matrix. So we've got alpha one, alpha one here, alpha one, alpha n, alpha n, alpha one, and alpha n, alpha n. And notice this seems like it may depend on the choice of the simple roots, but due to a result that we proved in the last video, this is in fact independent of the base of the root system. Now let's also recall that alpha i with itself, that bilinear form is equal to two. That's actually true for any root, not just the simple roots. And then we also know that alpha i alpha j times alpha j alpha i is either 0, 1, 2, or 3. We proved that a while ago. And then we also know that if one of them is equal to 0, the other is equal to 0. And then if one of them is negative 1, then the other one is negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3. Also, I guess I didn't write that here, but if i is not equal to j, then in fact, this alpha i alpha j is always less than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's some of the stuff about a Carton matrix and just recalling the values that this inner product on, or sorry, this bilinear form on the simple roots can take. Let's also look at the notion of a Dinkin diagram. So that's going to be a graph where the vertices are labeled by simple roots and then the edges satisfy the following rules. So if alpha i alpha j is zero, there's no edge between the vertices. But then if it's negative one, there's just a simple edge between the two vertices. If alpha i alpha j is negative two, and obviously the switch is negative one, you've got this double edge with an arrow pointing from alpha i to alpha j. And then if you have a negative three, then you have this triple edge and the arrow pointing from alpha i to alpha j. Okay, so now let's look at an example. So let's recall that if we have a Lie algebra L, which is SL, um, n plus 1, entries in C. In other words, it's in the series A sub n. We haven't talked about that series, but let's maybe point out that this is also part of the classical series A n, which we'll talk about later. Then the roots go like this. So they are epsilon i minus epsilon j, where one is less than or equal to i, which is not equal to j, which is less than or equal to n, let's see, plus one. Okay, but then that's gonna give us simple roots, which we've done all this before, that's why I'm not really going into the details. The simple roots are alpha one up to alpha n, where alpha i is epsilon i minus epsilon i plus one. And now we can pretty easily calculate this bilinear form based off of how it's defined. So let's observe that alpha i alpha i, well that's always equal to two for all roots. And well, I'll let you maybe recall why that is. And then if we take the bilinear form of alpha i alpha j, where I should point out here that we're taking i not equal to j, well, by definition, that's two times the inner product of alpha i with alpha j over the inner product of alpha j with itself. Okay, and well, like I said, that's simply the definition of this bilinear form with the angle brackets. But notice alpha j with itself is two, that cancels out this two in the numerator, and then this inner product is simply the dot product, 
So we have epsilon i minus epsilon i plus one dot product with epsilon j minus epsilon j plus one, where you can think of those as like the standard basis vectors. So that pretty quickly gives us minus delta i plus one j minus delta i j plus one, where that's the Kronecker delta. So let's observe that that's going to be equal to negative 1 if i is equal to j plus 1, or negative 1 if j is equal to i plus 1, and it's going to be 0 otherwise. So that tells us that the Carton matrix has the following form. So this is a pretty easy thing to see from this calculation that we've done here. So it's going to have 2 on the diagonals, and on the sub and super diagonals, we're going to have a minus 1. So it looks something like that. And then the Dinkin diagram, well, that's just going to be this very simple graph that looks like this, where there are, let's see, there are going to be n plus, or sorry, there are going to be n vertices there. Okay, good. So now that we've got this example, let's see what our goals are and then start proving some results that work towards those goals. Okay, so our next big goal is to show that the classical Lie algebras are simple. Well, almost all of the time. Let's look at what those are. So the first class of classical Lie algebras are SLN. So those are going to be n by n trace zero matrices. And then we've got SON, so those are n by n matrices, so that if you add the matrix to its transpose, you get zero. And then there's SP2N, so those are 2n by 2n matrices, so that when you do this kind of action over here where JN is this funny looking 2n by 2n matrix, you get zero. Now, you get simplicity, we're going to show that you get simplicity in all cases except SO2 and SO4, and those would be clearly not simple. Let's also recall that if you've got a complex Lie algebra L and a Carton subalgebra H, recall that Carton means um, an abelian semi-simple subalgebra that is of maximal size. Then this set phi, which is a subset of the dual space of H, is called the set of roots of the Lie algebra and L alpha. Well, that's going to be all X in L, where the bracket of H with X is alpha applied to H, which is a number, obviously, times X for all H and H. And then with this data, you get the nice root space decomposition of L. So it's going to be the Carton direct sum with this big direct sum over all of the roots of L alpha. Okay, so now let's get to work towards this goal. But before we do that, I'd like to point out that it's pretty clear what the Carton matrices are for these classical Lie algebras. Because what, what we want is an abelian semi-simple Lie algebra or Lie subalgebra of maximal size. And that's simply going to be the diagonal matrices inside of these Lie algebras. Okay, so now let's get going. Okay, so let's look at our first result of the day. So again, we've got this similar setup. L is a complex Lie algebra. H is a Carton subalgebra. And then we've got the root space decomposition. And then we're going to suppose these three things hold. First, there's a non-zero element of the Carton matrix, or for all non-zero elements of the Carton matrix, there exists a root alpha where alpha applied to H is non-zero. So we're assuming that holds. And then for all alpha, which is a root, the dimension of L alpha is one. We're assuming that holds. And then next, if alpha is a root, then minus alpha is a root. And if L alpha is spanned by X alpha, like we have over there, then this bracket of the bracket of X alpha with X minus alpha and X alpha is non-zero. So if those three things hold, then L is semi-simple. And how we're going to prove this is with an equivalence of semi-simplicity, which says that L has no non-zero abelian ideals, which I believe we proved earlier. Okay, so now let's get to the proof, which we're going to prove by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's let A be a non-zero ideal, which is abelian. So an abelian 
non-zero ideal. And we'll see that something goes wrong here. And then what we'll do is do the following decomposition, which is pretty clear that we can do this. So A is going to decompose as the intersection of A with Carton. That's like the Carton part of A, if you will. And then direct sum with all of the root space things. So there we've got alpha in phi of A intersected with L alpha. Okay, and now we're going to prove a little bit of a subclaim. And the subclaim goes like this. We want to show that A is totally contained inside of H. But now that's in fact pretty clearly equivalent to saying that A is the same thing as A intersected with H. That's true for all sets. Okay, now how does the proof of this claim goes? Well, the proof of this claim within our proof is going to be proven by way of contradiction too. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that we've got a root, which I'll call beta, such that L beta intersected with A is non-empty. That's exactly what it would take for this not to hold right here. But then let's also recall that L beta is one dimensional. It's spanned by X beta. So that means that X beta is an element of A. Because if this intersection is non-empty and, well, we've got a one-dimensional subspace here, then that means that the basis vector for that one-dimensional subspace has got to be inside of A. Okay, but then what do we know? But then we know that if we take the bracket of X beta with X minus beta, well, that's going to be inside of the bracket of A with L. Just keeping in mind that X beta is an A and X minus beta is an L by, let's see, this number three right here. But since A is an ideal, this whole thing is inside of A, and that's because A is an ideal. Okay, but then also we have the following, and that is zero is not equal to X beta X minus beta bracketed with x beta. That's by number three. But then it's also equal to zero because it's the bracket of two things inside of A. And A is an abelian subalgebra. So there, we've got zero is not zero, but that's our clear contradiction. Meaning that, well, what did we just do? We just proved this claim right here. Okay, so now let's take that claim and see if we can finish this whole thing off. Okay, so we just finished this claim and now what we'll do is take anything that's non-zero inside of A and then what we'll do from there is observe that A is inside of H by our claim so we can use number one. And so let's find what I'll call gamma, which is a root such that gamma applied to A is non-zero. So we're using number one up there, one of our assumptions to do that. But now check it out what we can do from there. We can look at X gamma, which is equal to one over gamma evaluated at A times the bracket of A with X gamma, because we know the bracket of A with X gamma is exactly gamma of A. So we just divide by that and you get X gamma. But now let's observe that this first part is inside of A and that second part is inside of L gamma. But then since A is an ideal, that's gonna be inside of A. But then X gamma is inside of L gamma, so then that means that's also inside of L gamma. But then A is a subset of H, so that's inside of H intersected with L gamma. But then also by the direct sum decomposition here, we know that H intersected with L gamma exactly has to be the zero vector, but we know that X gamma is not equal to the zero vector. So that builds our contradiction to our assumption up here that we had a non-zero abelian ideal. And well, that finishes the proof of this proposition. And let's move on to the next. Okay, so now on to our next result. And that says if we have this tried and true setup where L is complex semi-simple Lie algebra, H is a Carton subalgebra, and phi is a root system, then if 
phi is an irreducible root system, then L is simple. Recall that we looked at irreducible root systems in a previous video. And why is this important? Well, it's important because if we've got a connected Dinkin diagram, a connected Dinkin diagram will give us an irreducible root system or I guess I should say that if a root system is irreducible, that's equivalent to the Dinkin diagram being connected. So to back up, connected Dinkin diagram gives us irreducible root system, gives us simple Lie algebra. So that'll give us a nice pathway for determining if something is simple. And observe that, well, we had a connected Dinkin diagram for SLN plus one. So this result would immediately tell us that SLN plus one is simple, even though we've proven that already. So in fact, when we go back and prove that the classical Lie algebras are simple in most of the cases, we won't do SLN plus one because we did it in a previous video without this machinery. And well, we just did it in words again right now using this machinery. Okay. So let's get to this proof, which we'll do with the contrapositive. So let's write L using its decomposition. So we've got H and then direct sum over the direct sum of all of the root spaces. And then let's also suppose that we've got a non-zero ideal. So is an ideal of L. So remember, simple means that there are non, no non-zero ideals. So what we're doing is showing that not simple implies reducible for the root system. Okay, now let's let I perp be, well, the orthogonal complement of I with respect to the killing form. So let's see, this is all going to be all X inside of L where the killing form of X with Y is equal to zero. And this is going to be for all Y inside of I. And well, that's going to be inside of L and it's going to be an ideal. So it's not necessarily an ideal for an arbitrary inner product, but it is if you have the killing form. And I think I accidentally called this thing over here the killing form earlier, but that was a mistake. Um, that was a slip. Okay, so now let's observe that we have L is equal to I direct sum with I complement. So it's the direct sum of those two ideals. But then we can decompose the following. So notice that I will decompose as H1 direct sum alpha in phi1 of L alpha, and then I perp will decompose as H2 direct sum with alpha in uh, phi2 of L alpha. Where pretty clearly we have H is equal to H1 direct sum H2. And then also we have phi is equal to phi1 union phi2 where phi1 intersect phi2 is empty but that's a reduction of phi. In other words, phi is a reducible root system. So let's, let's see, we showed that not simple implies not irreducible, but again, since that's the contrapositive, we know that irreducible implies simple as necessary. Okay, so now let's outline this program for showing that these classical Lie algebras are simple and will be done for the day. Okay, so we'll finish with our big goal and an outline towards our big goal. So we wanna show that, except in the cases for SO2 and SO4, the classical Lie algebras are simple. And here's the outline. So we'll take L to be a classical Lie algebra and then find the Carton subalgebra, which as before we said that that would end up being the set of diagonal matrices. And then we'll do the root space decomposition. And then for each root alpha, we'll show that this bracket thing right here is non-zero. That was one of the things that we needed within uh, the results that was building this situation. And then we'll find a set of simple roots, which we'll call delta for the root system phi. And then we wanna find that wedge bilinear form for any two simple roots. So how do we do that? 
Well, if we take two simple roots alpha and beta, we'll find H alpha and E beta from the respective SL2 triples. And then we'll observe that this wedge bilinear form alpha beta is equal to beta applied to H alpha. That was something we did before. I think that's equivalent to the definition of this wedge inner product. And then from that, we can build the Carton matrix. We can also build the Dinkin diagram we'll see that that Dinkin diagram is connected, which means the root system is irreducible, which means that the Lie algebra is simple and we're done. Okay, so the next video or two will be exactly this, showing that these classical Lie algebras are simple, and that's a good place to stop.